Hi everyone, it's Russell here from The Presenter and Onside Presentations, hope you're well. Just a really, really quick video, or as quick as I can make it, um, about my top three tips for presenting data. So this is something that I've been asked a lot over uh, probably the last six months or so, is a lot of our presentations have data in them. How do we make that look interesting? And even if we can't make it look really exciting and interesting, how do we present it in a way that helps the audience members engage with it and understand it a bit more? So here's my top three tips for doing just that. So, Tip number one, and I must add that these aren't in any particular order of importance, but tip number one is to use a system called Infogram. Um, so I've got that on my machine here. I'm going to show you it very quickly. Infogram is a system that enables you to build uh, interactive infographics, uh, dashboards of data, and lots of other things like reports and so on. So I can show you a few quick examples here on my machine. Um, some of you may know that I'm training at the moment for something that scares the life out of me, which is a, an Ironman triathlon. So I've been tracking all of my training data through here and I'm able to um, embed this into a web page which I can share with other people um, that I'm also on this training plan with and I can look at my swim data or I can switch my swim data off and just focus on my running over the last year so I can look at each month and how many miles I ran and then I can look at the biking, how much biking have I done over the last few months and maybe I want to compare the biking and the running to see what the difference is. Obviously there's going to be a huge difference in the amount of miles you can cover on a bike as compared to when you're just on foot running. So that's just one quick example but I can also just go back to my dashboard here and show you a few other things. So there's some really really nice infographic um, type presentations and I will call these presentations because in my mind that, that is what they are, you're, you're presenting data in a really really nice way. So this is actually an infographic that doesn't really have any particular data on it but Infogram enables you to create something that just looks great and is easy to share. So this is about the benefits of meditation. There's a little bit of data at the bottom here and again, we can embed this onto a web page, we can share it with people online, and they'll be able to click on this through a mobile device um, or from their laptop and view all of the information. So there are lots and lots of great things that you can do with this. And to give you a real life example of how this is being used, so FC Barcelona uh, football team have actually used Infogram on their website to show some stats from the team. So the first thing that you can look at is um, the 41 goals that they've scored and how many of those were from Messi, how many were from the other players. And again, you can click on this data and switch off certain players. So if we take Messi out of the equation, we can see who's the top goal scorer. Then we can scroll down um, and look at the assists from the team. We can also look at the number of minutes played. So again, Messi is kind of the biggest segment there. He's played the most minutes out of all of the players. And we can scroll down even further to look at more information as well. So really, really interesting. It doesn't have to be for um, sports, of course. I've shown you my training data. I've shown you what FC Barca have done here. But of course, this can be applied to any business scenario, any business data that you might be trying to present to your audience. So tip number one, Infogram. Go and take a look at it, have a play with it online. If you need any more advice or want to know how to get started with that, then just reach out to me uh, or any of my team here um, and we'll definitely do what we can to help. Tip number two is something that I am absolutely in love with and it's one of these little things here. So this is a wireless clicker and you might think, well, why is he getting so excited about a wireless clicker? They've been around for ages. 
But this is Logitech Spotlight Wireless Remote. And what it enables you to do is highlight certain parts of the screen and magnify those if you want to, and also block out the rest of the screen. So I want to show you an example of how you can apply that to data that you might be presenting. So I'm just going to open up a brand new presentation here and I'm going to insert uh, a graph. We don't need to worry about the actual data for now. Let's just drop something onto the screen. There we go. So this is the typical kind of thing that we're used to seeing on PowerPoint slides. Um, not much work has been done to make this chart look nice and most of you won't have either the uh, ability to make things look nice, you won't have the confidence to make your data look nice. So what can we do to engage the audience? And this is where the spotlight remote comes in. So I can use this remote now and just simply by pointing it at my screen and the same obviously if I was connected to a projector, I can point it at my chart and I can highlight certain bits of information. And then when I release the home button and just press it again, the whole screen is revealed. So let's just put this in present mode so you get a bit more of a realistic view. Click the home button on the wireless remote, highlight a key bit of data, talk about that piece of information, talk about that piece of data, then click again to reveal the whole chart. So a little bugbear of mine when I used to sit in the audiences quite a lot within business presentations is someone would put a chart like this on the screen for about 20 minutes or so and of course we would all just sit there and stare at it and hope or the uh, presenter would hope that we were following along at the same time. Um, of course that wasn't the case because there's so much information to look at it's really difficult for us to be focusing on the part that the presenter is talking about at the same time. Um, not because we find it difficult to focus our attention but because that's just how our eyes and our brains work. We try and jump around and take in lots of information. So the great thing about this Spotlight remote, as I can show you on the screen here, is that it actually comes with a little piece of software that you install and you can decide how you use the Spotlight. So I have it set um, to just highlight at the moment, which is what you saw a second ago. But I can change this to magnify, so that I want to show you what happens with magnify. I'm going to make this magnify nice and big, and let's switch that off. Let's go back to the PowerPoint slide, put it in present mode, and let's just point at the data again. And now you can see we actually can magnify the data that's on the screen. So this is useful for so many different reasons. Again, it focuses the audience's attention on a certain bit of data. Um, if you're presenting in really large rooms and there's you know, three, 400 people in that room, uh, people at the back are gonna really struggle to see minute details, especially on charts like this. So use the Spotlight remote, magnify that content for them. You can use the Spotlight remote in the standard way as well. There is left and right arrow buttons here to just click through your content. But by playing around with some of those features in the Spotlight software, you can really change the way in which you engage your audience. And it's all about just helping them focus. So tip number three is, of course, yes, you guessed it, use Prezi. And I'm not just saying that as one of Prezi's official experts, I don't get paid for you know, <laughs> saying that or anything like that at all. Um, but I genuine, genuinely believe that the basic uh, zooming interface of Prezi, so Prezi at its absolute most basic form, being able to zoom in and zoom out, actually enables you to take your audience on a journey through data and again, that can engage them and it can make for a much more interesting presentation. So let me show you what I mean. So what I'm gonna do here is just fire up a standard Prezi template. Um, I'm gonna jump into one of the areas here within Prezi and I'm going to insert a chart. Uh, again, we won't worry about the actual data, but I'm gonna show you how you could work with that chart to create something that can really, really engage your audience. 
So let's just zoom in to one of these areas so that we get a nice blank space to work on. Let's remove some of these bits of content. And I'm going to go to the insert menu at the top, click on charts, and again, I'm going to bring in a line chart. Just double tap on line chart over on the right, that will load up. There we go, so we've got our line chart on the screen. Again, there's a lot for people to look at there. So Prezi has this really, really lovely little feature, which is just up here at the top of the screen called animations. And animations enable you to insert zoom areas. Now, any of you who would have used the older version of Prezi Prezi Classic will be used to the fact that you could just zoom in anywhere you wanted to, and this is exactly the same in the latest version of Prezi, Prezi Next. So I'm gonna add a zoom area here, and let's say that we wanna zoom in on this area where our data kind of crosses over. So if we look at the key down here, this is where the data for China and Japan actually crosses over. So that's going to be our first zoom area. And then over in the animations panel on the right again, I'm going to um, zoom back out to the page after we've zoomed into that area. Then I'm going to add another zoom area and maybe we want to focus in on this area over here which actually shows us why in 2015 Japan, Germany and France were pretty much at the same level, although Japan just getting better scores. So maybe that's an area up for discussion that we want to focus in on. So I'm going to add that zoom area, then I'm going to add another zoom out to page. So if I hit the present button now and just show you how this looks, what we can actually do is, um, again, using a Spotlight remote or any kind of wireless remote, we can just hit the right arrow to zoom in. We talk about China and Japan and why they cross over on that particular year. Then we zoom out to help everyone understand the full data that we're talking about, the full set of data. Then on the next click, we're zooming in to talk about why those countries are at a fairly kind of similar level in 2015 and then we zoom out again. Now what we're actually doing here is we're helping our audience focus in on the detail and then relate or build relationships between all of the content by zooming out and showing them that big picture, the full set of data. And that's something I talk about a lot when I'm delivering Prezi training. Um, and that's really where the power of Prezi lies. It's in being able to show the big picture focus your audience's attention on key bits of, in our case, data, uh, or key bits of content, and then zoom back out to see the big picture again. So that's tip number three, and those are my top three tips into presenting data. I hope that you found this useful. If you have, please put tons and tons of comments in the video below. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well for lots more tips like this. And please get in touch if you need any help or advice in putting either of those three things, or maybe all of them, into practice. So I really look forward to seeing your comments, and I'll see you again soon.